Okay, so that's great. Uh, my name is John Dan. I am uh, the CTO and the co-founder of NormShield. We provide threat and vulnerability management, but we also like cool technologies as well. We would like to teach what we ha already experienced. Um, and uh, I have a computer engineering bachelor of science. I have more than five years of network and security admin experience. And also, I dis after that, I decided to go to the offensive part because offensive is easier. Um, okay, in the last week, we talked about these tools. Uh, so. Um, our starting point is usually what um, we would like to take a look at the logs and also we want to know that how many logs we are dealing with and secondly how many lines of logs we are dealing with and the type of the logs and then we may consider the some kind of scenario so in this meta we are going to focus on using these tools in a much more analysis perfect so uh, that's why we told you that the download the files from beta to slash threat hunting there are 12 scenarios um, so those are includes also some questions one or two questions actually so I assume that you already um, know the these tools or if you don't I already recorded the session and uploaded to the to our YouTube channel so you, you can find the basic Linux command and also part one and part two last week we covered these tools but unfortunately I forget to turn the volume on that's why it was silent when I went to home that's why I recorded second time at, at home by myself. So this week I assume that I already turned on the volume, so it's going to record my voice as well. Okay, so let's go and analyze the logs. So first of all, which one you would like to see first? Okay, so there are 12 options. Uh, the PCAP logs is actually the, for the next meetup. So this, this meetup we are going to deal with the uh, three or four of the logs in this list. So they are uh, Apache logs, it's a web log, and uh, kernel system logs of a Linux box, DNS and DHCP logs, FTP log, and we collected some from uh, Honeypot. And also I compiled a half a million uh, HTTP headers, and it's in that HTTP header file, so it's a gigantic log file. And also IDS and IES log files, Nginx, uh, some tricky questions, SMTP and virus total. So those two are, let's save them for the second session because the SMTP and virus total, they are the most difficult two of, two of them are the most difficult ones. But we can pick the from one to 10 in this session. So which one do you prefer? Honeypot, let's, let's actually vote for that. Honeypot, how many people would like to see Honeypot? Okay, one, two, three, four, five, oh, okay, good. Uh, let's throw another number. Uh, how many people would like to see DNS? One, two, three, four, five, six. Mm, that's also good. Okay. Okay. HTTP headers. Uh, okay. How many people HTTP headers? Okay. There are a few. Okay. Let's start with um, easier one. Then I will jump to Honeypot because Honeypot a little bit, you know, tricky. And we will start with FTP. So we have a command line as expected. Not Docker, it's just a mistake. Thank you, Docker. Not now. Okay, so the questions are what are the usernames used by the attackers? So obviously, we're talking about a what kind of attack. Okay, what kind of attack you can see in FTP log? Brute force. force. That is the most famous attack that you can see on an FTP. Secondly, if you misconfigured your FTP server, you may see an anonymous login and excessive, you know, requests. So in an FTP log, you cannot see a lot of denial of service attacks because if I am sending a lot of SIM flu to an FTP port, FTP server is not going to log that because it's an OSI level 4, right? FTP logs only application level, which is OSI level 7. That's why you cannot see that in log. So that's why if you have a log file, you need to know that in which level you are going to take a look at that, what kind of attack vectors you can see that. So in an FTP log, can I see an SQL injection? Is there any chance that SQL injection or cross-site scripting 
payload may exist in this log file? No, of course, right? Because in FTP, there has to be related attack vectors. Okay, and then what file name that successful uh, file name, what kind of a sentence is, is the file name that successful download? <laughs> Horrible sentence, right? <laughs> okay, but you understand the idea. What, what's the name of the file that is downloaded from the uh, FTP server? Okay, so let's, um, let's look at the unzip our file. Unzip FTP. Okay, change directory upon the we can remove that file, it's actually coming from my so this is the log file, it's not that big, but there are two files, right? One is ftp.log, the other one is filezilla.log, right? One of them is 1.6 megabyte, the other one is quarter megabyte. So let's count the number of the lines for each log file so as you can see guys both of them are ending with log file so I can use a wild wildcard dot log so in total it's 8300 it's not that big log file but it's still not a good idea to open in a notepad and take a look at the for all file so where we need to know what kind of uh, log this is look like so in order to find it out what I need to do is I will get the header of each log file, right? So this is another way that we are approaching. So let's start with this one. It's actually uh, the filezilla.log. So we may need to analyze both of them for different. Okay, so the first one, filezilla.log, as you can see, that's a pretty, pretty, uh, you know, semi-structured, right? It's understandable. The other one seems a little bit crappy there are some interesting things exist here, so we're going to talk about this crappy locks as well. So let's focus on filezilla.log because, as you can see, guys, both log files are not the same structure, right? So can I analyze both of them together? Not a good idea because if you're analyzing two files together, you got to make sure that they, both of them, at least similar structures, right? But this time, it's totally different. So we need to analyze one by one. And I can see that in the FileZilla lock, it says user space root, and there is a password required for user, and user admin, password required for admin. So that is how you can see in a, a FTP, log, FTP log, right? So somebody is trying with a user, and you see that user something, right? So what can I do? I can grab the log, file, log lines. That includes user something, right? Let's let's quickly get it out from the file Zilla lock. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get user space and there is something from the file Zilla lock and let's get the head so we can make sure that it's uh, it's the one that we are looking for. As you can see, those are root admin, administrative, web admin, sysadmin, net admin. Hmm, it, it's it makes sense, huh? What kind of uh, so these are the user names that might be commonly used, right? So probably um, our attacker using a common administrative username, administer usernames to find it out with that password, right? So interesting thing is he is trying with multiple users, not one user, right? So that's another attack vector. So it's called horizontal brute forcing. It's not a vertical brute forcing. So in, instead of, uh, actually, uh, a few of you already remember in my ethical hacking session, instead of finding a user, uh, finding a password of a user, why not we find a user with a password 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, right? Because that's also possible. If you are talking about an organization with 20,000 people working on that, probably there is somebody using 128 as a password, right? So that's also another way to find that out, find out a password. So that's why he is trying to use this one. So of course we get only a sample. We only get the top 10 of these logs. So let's count the how many how many username and password we are talking about. It's 69. It's not that long. We can print it to screen. Let's get all of them. So as you can see, guys, there are admins, administrators, web, guests. Hmm, there are some rotation, right? So I see the repeated username and password. So let's get the different uh, name, usernames and password, how many times they are tried, right? 
So I need to get the only the last section. I, I don't need the first sections actually. So that is the attacker's IP address, obviously 192, 168, 99, 161. It's obvious, but how about the username? How many username? How many times they are tried, right? Let's get them. How can I get it? How can I get the last section? How oh, cut right there? All of them are possible. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to split with user and I'm going to get the second part, right? Because that's easy. I know that the user is sitting between those lines. I can count the spaces. That's also possible, but it's a little bit harder to count all those spaces. But instead, you can use awk to use as a delimiter the full sentence, right? So for example, if you put user space, it's going to be a delimiter. Let me actually move my, yeah. So the user is space user space is just sitting between my username and the rest of the line. So I will use that and I'm going to use the aux syntax to print the second part. Okay. And then if I do only head here, I can get the username. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort these lines and then I'm going to get the unique minus C to count how many items over there and I'm gonna sort them again what depending on the number of tries right and the R stands for the reverse reverse um, sorting so when I do that I see that our attacker tried root eight times web seven times user seven times you see that the web admin and system admins they are tried only six times so obviously he is trying to find out the one of these password by trying the multiple password right so that is the uh, analyzes of this small log file. So how about the other question? What was the other question? Um, okay, so um, let's see the other log file, right? Because we only analyze one of them. It seems that these, these are the attackers, uh, attackers use these usernames um, to find the password. And uh, let's, let's use less to analyze the other log file. Uh, what was that? FTP. Oh. Okay, when I look at that, there is a garbage here, and there are some items here. Hmm. Seems a little bit interesting, but here we are looking at a little bit understandable log format. So that's possible you see something like this, and this is usually called. Um, uh, hexadecimal encoding okay so in log file if there is something includes some non-printable characters then the log may be encoded in a hexadecimal format so that's why you see backslash x then the unicode of that file so there are some interesting characters inside those so that's also interesting thing we may assume that somebody tried some special payloads here so that's usually an indication of trying a use um, uh, what do you call buffer overflow attacks so but we're not going to deal with that so there is a chance that that might be or may not be depending on the you know version so what we're gonna do is we're gonna look for the um, username and password as you can see guys there are emails here here and the password at example.com they are all used but this time it's not a username and password right it's just a Passive mode, delete something, store something, right? Delete something, store something. So it's actually a, a number of events are going on here. So what I like to do is I have no idea what this log file is look like. And there is no header in this log file, right? That is possible. You may see some log files with no clue. So this is just a you know, horrible log file that you can see, but it's still possible to see. What I'm going to do is I notice that there are usernames here, right? Anonymous, anonymous try something in passive, and there is another one. It says IE user. So those are the things that might be interesting. And uh, let's see. Yeah, anonymous, and uh, the other one is FTP, password as example. Okay, let's let's grab the, those sections, and also I would like to get the delete, password, and things like that, right? Because those, those are seems and interesting for me, though. Uh, okay, let's head ftp.log. 
so I can get the which sections can I get. Okay, this time it's interestingly, uh, so here is we have, what kind of character do we have here? It's tab, right? It's not space. So that's why if you would like to use cut, you need to have a special trick to split this, right? So if I use a, so for example here and cut and try to use this, it's not going to work. Okay, so let me put it on the top here. It's not going to work because printing tab in a command line is not working like that. But luckily, I included in there my cheat sheet. So if you would like to put that tab character, printf backslash t is the way you can, you know, put a back, you know, tab line in, in a log file, um, in a bash line. Okay, so what I'm going to do is actually I'm not going to use um, cut because I need to use... Uh, Help for this. Okay, and then let's get print um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven, eight, nine. I'm going to get seven, and then I'm going to put some space here, seven, and then I'm going to get eight. And nine. Do I have to put plus here? I'm not sure in Python, yes, but in, in here, I'm not sure. Let's see. If, if, if it gives an error, then we need to do something else. Okay, it seems definitely it works. So, okay, that is working. So let's sort and um, group this thing, right? So we need, we need some analysis on that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to sort this, but, um, okay, username. Yeah, I, I think it works. Sort unique minus C and sort minus NR. Okay, and I'm going to say head again. Uh, what? What are you talking about? <laughs> that's right. Okay. We need to cat this log file to analyze because I'm getting only head and I'm just surprised why is this so small. Okay, here we go. So we have uh, a number of um, FTP and also password as example, which goes into passive mode. So you need to know that this is in FTP, is PA. SV means the passive mode. It means that the user doesn't do anything for uh, some certain amount of time, then it goes into passive mode. Store, why is that? Of course, putting some file, delete, deleting something. Retrieve, that is the one that we're looking for. If something is downloaded, it is the retrieve, okay? And uh, I don't know this command was, we may need to check for that. Okay. And uh, what's that? Uh, oh, yes, might be, depends. So, okay, yeah, we have something here, and let's check this out, retrieve lines, huh? What kind of um, operation happened on that line? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab retrieve. Okay, and in ftp.log, and I'm going to get head again. Okay, so what are we looking at now? Can you tell me what kind of files and directories downloaded from the FTP server? It's actually, we get only a sample, but you can get the whole list as well. So what is that? He is trying to download the directory, which includes profile, bash RC, bash logout, batch history. It's actually somebody else's home directory, right? He's downloading a home directory of some person. So that is that we can find, of course, we can grab that section. How can we get that section? Actually, let's get let's get that section clearly so we can better see that. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, um, instead of this, I'm gonna grab, retrieve, and it's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, let's get the tent column
okay we don't need to sort actually just let's get uh, some result weights more okay these are the you know downloaded things from the file python config you know templates all of them interesting this svc host.exe hmm, that's interesting registration python user python there are a lot actually downloaded from this file seems okay so we found the what kind of files downloaded what kind of username is you know tried on this uh, log files okay we're in good shape here what was the other one so let's jump on to honeypot any question on this FTP logs did you guys get the idea You mean printf? Yeah, well, I, I, I had to put that in the, uh, yeah, it has to start with dollar sign, and also there has to be parentheses, you know, surrounding, and also the backslash t must be in the code. It's not working. Let's take a look at it in the break. Okay. okay. All right. Let's jump to Honeypot. Uh, so we have a JSON file here. Let's take a look at this file with less command again. So before doing that, actually, let's take a look at the, how big is this file, ls h It's 78 megabytes of JSON file. If you try to open it with a Notepad, it's going to be pretty crappy and it's not going to make any sense. If you try to upload the online service, you'll probably get that it's too big for an online service. If you try to open with a editor or like an integrated development environment, you'll probably consume a lot of CPU. That's not a good idea. So we need to deal with the JSON files. You're going to see that multiple times in your entire life. And let's let's take a look at that first. Uh, let me actually count word count of this honeypot. Surprising 200,000 lines. Let's take a look at which uh, less. Okay. So, obviously, every line starts with curly brace, ends with a curly brace, right? It seems, it's actually, usually, JSON files are, you know, structures in this way. You may see some comma, but this time, it's not a full JSON, you know, all file is not a single JSON object. Instead, every line is a JSON object. You know what I'm talking about? So, if you try to put them in a, json parser it's not going to, it's not going to work because each line by line it's a json object but the whole file is not actually a json object because it has to surround with the square brackets and there has to be a comma at the end of every line in order to make this a valid json object anyway so we know that every line is a json object and we are looking at a kind of http log yeah it seems all right because there is some request here request row here and i see some get here and post here right so that's a that's a pretty nice uh log if you see something really structured in this way that's a pretty good thing but the challenge is if you if you try to analyze this with uh command line it's going to cost you a lot but still we need to do that with command line because we are going to analyze the multiple json files in the virus total section with Python. We're gonna see that as well. So, what was the question, by the way? I think I lost the question. Uh, the the oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. No, it's actually uh, JSON. It's an. It may be an acronym, but I think it's a JavaScript object notation. It's something like that, right? So it's a um, pretty used and restful web service APIs and uh, development environment. So in order to communicate one machine to another machine, they usually prefer either a XML file or a JSON file because these are structured files. So it's fully structured file. It's uh, in, um, so for example, here, every, every line has some Headers. So, for example, underscore ID, underscore ID here, underscore ID should be somewhere around here again. 
So it has underscore ID identification for each one. It says this after the this uh, comma, uh, it's going to be the identification. And after the timestamp, you will see a date object. It's going to be in this format. So it's a pretty well format. But this time, the uh, header, maybe let's say header of a column, is embedded in the log file. So that's why we are um, we have a little bit crappy, but also well formatted uh, structure here. So and the interesting thing is the backslash is the escape. Character. So, for example, here it says the payload, and it's a pattern between two comma. But this one is actually stands for the start of a string. But this is not the start of a string. It is just a code character. But inside the JSON, it has to be escaped. Otherwise, it's gonna break the structure of an JSON. So that's why it's a little bit crappy. But anyway, we still can analyze this thing and. Uh, uh, we are looking for the IP addresses, top three attacking IP addresses. So how can I find the attacking IP addresses? So we need to find the uh, the request IP address, right? Uh, so let's find the IP address first. In a, let's only take a look at one log file. Let me highlight that. Okay, here. Can you guys tell me where is the IP address? This is one. What is that? Date and uh, source right yeah it's source and here and uh, no destination ip address right host here and user here okay that's good let's choose another log file i mean log line okay here again uh we have a source again here we have an ip address but the another ip address doesn't exist in a single line right so the destination IP is not exit because probably destination IP is my server. That's obvious. That's why destination IP is not exist. But it's a good thing if you find some clue in here. So why I am interested in IP address and trying to find out that whether there is no other IP address in this log file? Because a log file, if you are looking at and if you are going to use the bash to analyze this log file, there is no delimiter in this line, right? Can you tell me that I can delimit with the space? No, space is not going to work. How about code? It's not going to work either because there are some codes here, but they are not actually the structure of the log file. So I can't use a backslash tab because it's not tab delimited. Maybe this character, small chance. But the problem is, sorry, the problem is in JSON file, it can be mixed, right? It doesn't have to be in an order. It can be, so for example, it says the channel, it can be at the end of the line or at the beginning of the line. It's perfectly valid. It's not going to hurt anybody. So that is why if you try to split with comma, it's not going to work either. So you have a question? No, no, it's a question. I, I, you, you look at some uh, common patterns that you can focus on yeah. and grab it. So yeah. IP address has four articles and uh, dots. Exactly. And that's probably what you will do. Exactly. That's right. Because there is no chance that I can use a bash to analyze this JSON file. That's why I have to find uh, some patterns to pull up the, from this log line, right? That is the only pattern that I can use. It's an IP address regular expression. Luckily, in your cheat sheet, there is an IP address regular expression. How can I use that? <laughs> so, let me show you, for, first of all, something and... Uh, so, if the log file had mixed source and destination, I could have used it and it would have worked. Yeah, I, I still can do that because if I know the destination and destination is my server IP address, I can exclude that, right? That's, uh, but in this case, there is no destination. That's easier for us, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use regular expression by using minus E. And uh, can you tell me, guys, uh, what is the simplest IP address regular expression? No, 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 no. It's it's going to match. It's going to match to. It's going to match to a version number or maybe some other things. So. No, no, no. It's not a good idea. But here is a zero nine, oh, and there might be. Uh, one, two, three at most, and then there will be a dot, right? And this is going to be repeated 
three times and then one more but this time there will be no dot right so this is the very simplest IP address regular expression you can use this or even you may make it a little bit you know complicated or even you may use a real IP regular expression which is right written here so you can find it online but in order to keep it simple I just decide to use this so it's not gonna hurt anybody in this case so pardon me uh, yeah there is a disadvantage because if there is something like one two three four dot one two three one two three then it's gonna hit our you know regular expression it's not this is not also perfect I assume I know that but uh, if you are trying to play around with regular expression you gotta approximate to your this you know target as much as possible right that's why we are using one two or three okay so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the hiding part but here's the surprise oh what happened now I still have the same thing what's going on here I grabbed the line and it's still telling me the exactly the same thing what's wrong here it's one line right so how can I pull up only the IP address section from this line luckily grab as a wonderful feature if you say that only the object that matches this regular expression can you give me that part that's easy right that is how you can pull up a small section in a whole line even if it's a garbage you can grab that section so that's easy so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sort of course again and then I'm gonna say unique minus C and then sort minus on air and R. sorry and then if I say head it's gonna take a little bit time because uh, it's gonna analyze the whole 20 215,000 lines and then uh, it's gonna sort and then unique and then sort again so it's gonna cost a little bit CPU and memory to me but finally we get a result here so it says that 172 31 13 124 tried 100 125,000 times to my server come to my server right top attacker by the way remember all of the IP addresses in this log file are the attacker right because it's a honeypot it's not a real application we are not expecting anybody to use my application it's just a dummy application right that's why all of them are attacker so that's why I am you know using the real IP addresses because these are the real attackers IP addresses is that good we're good so you know if you know regular expression and also one single parameter and grab that's super easy uh, what was the other question okay service and ports okay how, how can I find service and ports let's see uh, in a file it says ID timestamp here it says normalize pattern file name source Oh, okay. I think this is the mm, no. It's that's not. It's the source port. I think because it's a high range port, probably. Yeah. Okay. And this is HTTP something something. Mm, okay. Referrer here. The user agent here. Chrome Safari. Do, 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 request URL here. Channel this one. I uh, don't understand the question. What is the most attack service port? Probably I want to say this section, but it's not the case. It's a, it's a wrong question. Right? Because 6000 is the source IP address. It's not the destination IP address. But we still can... No, probably this is source port. Because destination port should be either 443 or 80 or any HTTP lower port, right? yeah it doesn't seem that but we still can get these things get and post but it's obviously a URL so we can let's let's pull up the pull up the URLs right so here we have get something or post something right let's pull up this because this is the application endpoint that our you know attacker come to here so I need to grab these sections right post something and then grab something get something right those are the two things that maybe vary, maybe trace, options, so we can create a regular expression for that, but 
for this moment, let's assume that we're only dealing with the get and post. We can add more things. So how can I get a section that says get space something? Okay. Regex, yes. We can create a regex for that easily. Let's get only one line on the here so I can play around with that. Okay, so what I'm going to do is, again, I'm going to use regular expression, and I need only the object itself, not the whole line. That's why I'm going to put an O here. And regular expression here again. It's going to be either get or post write. So what I'm going to say is there should be an either uh, get or post here. Okay. And then there should be a space here. And then there is a slash here. Let's let's take a look at only this section, right? Before writing the everything, and let's make sure that this is working, right? Because I don't want to. Oh, it should be post, yeah. And I believe this is. It should be in parentheses, or it should be in a. Yeah, it should be in parentheses. There has to be a space here. Okay, and let's get that. Okay, obviously it's working. And then there is a URL, and uh, and the, the URL might be include a lot of characters. So do you think I should put dot star here? No, but if I do that, the space is going to be another character, then it's not going to work. So what I'm going to do, but we know that in URL, there, there, there is no way that URL could be in a URL, right? I mean, space could be in a URL. If you put a space in a URL, it's going to convert it to percent 20. So there should be no space, but other characters. How can I put that in regular expression? Yes, that's right. If you do this, it means that there will be Characters, but that is not space, right? This time we're getting the negation of a character set. So, yeah, let's use this, and there will be multiple characters. There you are. We are getting some results here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get all the results, and then, and then I'm going to sort them, count them, the same, do the same thing. Sort, unique, and then sort, minus nr. So as you can see, guys, this is pretty straightforward. When you come up to your idea, sort unique minus C, of course, and then sort NR. So this is actually one command for me. Okay, let's give some time for that. And wow, it's pretty fast. There you are. We have manager HTML, tunblock.cgi, PHP admin setup. So obviously, the attackers find some of the, some of the vulnerable URLs and they play around with that. So, for example, manager HTML is being tested 275 times. And uh, somebody posted from tomblock.cgi, login action, a number of things, maybe username and password. Does that make sense? We're good? Okay, so tell me your ideas. What is the next candidate? One to ten. IDS, IES, DNS, uh, yeah. Apache. Actually, in the last meetup, we already deal with some of the IES logs. So I think we, we shouldn't waste our time with, for IES. But this time, the challenge is you need to deal with the multiple IES files in multiple folders. So you have to leverage using the uh, find command. OK, so what do you guys want? Actually, let me. Let me look at the solution. So uh, some of them have some trick. You need to deal with some tricks in that section. Uh, da, da, da. OK. Let's take a look at IDS. And it seems a little bit interesting. It's IDS, right? Uh, no, it's not IDS. It is. Yeah, it's IDS. OK. All right, unzip uh, ids.lock. OK, remove minus rf underscore these things. OK, and then get questions. 
top three attacker IP addresses, okay, and then most dangerous attacks. Top three attacker IP addresses, do you think I should solve that problem anymore? It's easy, right? This is an idea, so you are looking at some of the attackers, you can collect the IP addresses, you know, that's, that's pretty straightforward. So you are going to use the same regular expression to pull up the IP address from the log file. That's easy, but I would like to take a look at the most uh, dangerous attacks, right? This seems really interesting. So let's analyze our log first, and uh, and uh, let me get this way. So IDS replacements, IDS log replacement, two files starts with IDS, and uh, one of them is CBS, CSV, the other one is TXT file. That's interesting. Let's get the uh, word count of these files. Minus L, I, D, S, something. Okay, first one is uh, 32,000. The other one is 219,000. So that seems a little bit log files. Take a look at the head of the each log files. Okay, so replacement csv is actually a structured file it says time source ip source port destination destination port classification priority label package info it's pretty straightforward i think it's uh, pretty easy to uh, analyze and then we can get the whatever we want so most dangerous attack what do you understand if you look at the header of this log can you define the most dangerous attack for me Yeah, priority classification, those kind of things may be, you know, the indication of um, uh, most dangerous attacks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the uh, priority from this file. Those priority have three, so it's easy to get, right, because comma, three, comma is the pattern. It seems, uh, you know, the pattern. Maybe you can make it a little bit more specific, but it's still easy to get. And also, it's a CSV file. You can cut the using the comma, right? Using the uh, cut, and you can cut the with comma, and then you can get the whatever fields you want. That's pretty straightforward, and it's easy to analyze from this log file.